Well, hello there. This is our second attempt at an intro. As per usual, I effed up the original, but if you're wanting to listen to talk about the World Cup, go somewhere else, please, because... Yeah, what up? Uh, buy, buy, buy. Steam sales are here. Buy, buy, buy. I don't want to buy... Uh, uh, what? Yeah, what up? Cause this is my United States or whatever And this is my United States or whatever There's the song I was want to play after the intro, not before. <laughs> um, so last week I said I was going to do a uh, montage video trailer kind of thing for Watch Dogs. And I still will, but I just beat the game last week. And God, I was so played out. I don't know how many hours I put into it, but I was only... <laughs> I actually only completed like half the missions or something. But anyway, I did do a video... And I chose this song instead. This is called Skylarking by uh, BT. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did it to Need for Speed. I did a video a couple of years ago for Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. And I called it the Scenic Route. And it was like just... There's a camera hack, a camera mod for it. And I, you know, downloaded the camera mod and used it and went around the little world there and did all kinds of like action shots and, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I did the same thing in this one. And last time I used a song by a, a group called Pendulum. Yeah, I know them. I like them. And uh, this is kind of my follow-up to that video. I was I was thinking of doing like a spin-off, kind of like put the same music from Pendulum into the this video at the beginning, you know, and then kind of like spin it off into the BT song here. But I just I'm too lazy. But anyway, <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot of work to do stuff like the moral that. Moral of the story is, folks. Yeah. It's... Don't try. Just do. So, there you have it. Anyway, I'll put it up later. I put it up on YouTube earlier, and Andrew Espejo from uh, Control All Kill was like, not available in my country, and I was like, fuck off, Aww. YouTube. So, uh, yeah, I'll put it up on some other site later. I'll, tr I'll try to put it up on... Uh, maybe I can put it up on Gamer Side. That'd be cool. Because then you can get, like... It's, I have, like, a 40 megabit uh, version of it, and it looks really nice. And I, I use, like, super sampling and anti-aliasing and stuff when I capture this footage. And here's the funny thing. I captured the footage for it, like, a year ago. <laughs> and it's been sitting... 90 gigs of captured footage have been sitting on my hard drive for a year. Like, unused. <laughs> I would, so I finally... Yeah, I, I looked at that, and I was like, why don't I just do a video for that instead? So now I can get that space back. Good times. Anyway, uh, how you doing, Justin? I'm uh, I'm all right, you know. It's uh, it's another day. I'm happy to be here, and well, that's I'm always good. glad to you know always glad to be on the show. That's that's I'm always relieved to hear that because I never quite know when the week will be when you just don't want to come on anymore. So anyway, wait, would that be more kind of like a you know what? I don't want to do it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do whatever. I want to do whatever. <laughs> so um, my week was all right. It was uh. Just another week, pretty much. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was just hanging in there, I guess. The next couple of months are going to be in interesting. I'm going to have a lot of free time on my hands because it'll be the first time in a couple of years that I haven't had both a job and school or, you know, whatever. So I'll have to find something to kill time with, and hopefully I'll be able to get some stuff together and, you know, kind of put it up on YouTube or, you know, if they don't block it, uh, <laughs> add it to my demo reel eventually, but that'd be nice. <laughs> so, but yes. yeah. So. Well, Hey, it'll, it should be exciting for you, you know, give you, Oh, it'll be cool. Yeah, hopefully a little perspective. And yeah, exactly. Maybe... That's the thing is, is, uh, you take being busy for granted. A lot of people, oh, a lot of people do, I think. Yeah. So definitely. Uh, um, you know what you could do? What's that? While you have some time, you could watch my new show. Yeah, I will. I'll okay. do that. Two I'll episodes in now, okay? All right. Show your fellow co-host some support. <laughs> how do you uh, How do you like doing it? You Is know, it actually, fun? I really like it a lot. It's cool. once a week. I get to talk about various, you know, news, reviews. Uh -huh. uh, and I, I, I incorporated, which this was my plan from the start, but I didn't have them when I did the first episode. But I was going to incorporate my button system, and I did. And basically, like I said, I have the I have a yes button, a no button, a bullshit button. I have a laugh and applause. So I like talk about a game and I'm reviewing it and I'm like, mm, I'm going to give this one a yeah. And the guy's like, yeah. 
And, you know, and I, I'm like, you know, I, t I basically said, you know, for this game, you know, I'm going to give it a yes if you're into the genre. I said the price is a little too high, but it still gets a yes. I think if it was 20 bucks, it'd be a better grab, but still a yes. And I sent it to the guys, uh, the guys that gave me the game for review, uh, Nissa, and they loved it. They were like, oh, I love it. Good, good idea. That's cool. And, and whatnot. So. Yeah, I saw you put it up on N4G yesterday. That's good. Yeah. Hopefully that gets you some traffic. I, uh, I didn't know you could put, like, that, like, no offense to you, but you know what I mean? I, I didn't know you could. I thought you'd have a site or something to put well, there stuff is a on trick to it. What's that? I'm I'm working with Spawn first. Oh, that's right. You so do they have post a, it on their site, and then it's gotcha. and then it's applicable. Well, that's nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. All right. So. I'll... So it gets them traffic. Gets us right, the right. traffic. Yeah, that's that's badass. Yeah, I totally forgot that I can approve stuff on there too because I'd gone through the rigorous process of being able to do that for Control Out Kill years ago and. I saw the approve thing there, well, like, you know, and you you'd yeah. already been approved, but I was like, oh, yeah, I wonder if I can, yeah, I could, I could have helped you. But anyway. yeah. So you could uh, have next time. I could have, yeah, maybe next time. So whatever. Uh, tonight we're going to talk um, a couple of PC centric topics, I guess, and then uh, Justin, what did you play on console? Trials, that's what it is. You want to oh, well, play well, Trials? Well, I played a little bit of that um, on Trials, but trials another thing Evolution. I've been playing, I went back and played. We've been playing. More so is uh, Wonderful 101. Oh, cool! I have that, and I haven't played much of it. I know you oh. you were you were speaking highly of it on Twitter, so I'll have to go go back and try it out. But uh, okay, so first up tonight though, uh, Steam sale, Steam summer sale is going on, and uh, yes. I I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I've noticed my gaming habits have changed, and you know, of course, my buying habits have changed over the years and stuff. But yeah. I was thinking back because I've been replaying. Uh, some older games because of the Steam sale. The Steam sale just does that to me. And good old games also just had their summer sale. And uh, mm -hmm. that I I bought a couple of games on there. I think I bought Jade Empire. And oh, I did too. That's did funny. You really? and, I did. Um, yeah, it was it was like five bucks or something. I don't remember. But I also bought Earthworm Jim 3D. Yeah, I know. Nice. I haven't played that one. Um, but yeah, so it it gets me like nostalgic and wants you know wanting to play some older stuff and some old stuff I've never completed like Prince of Persia: Sands of Time. So I've never yeah. actually beaten that one. I know. So I'm going through it now. And yeah, Justin asked before you can play with a with a Xbox controller and uh, there's you know a trick there's a trick to getting it to run at 1080p, but it runs fine. And uh, you can super sample it and all that stuff and make it look nice. But I just uh, want to I just want to point out too for anybody that? that hasn't played that game or the other ones, mm -hmm. don't pick up the PS3 trilogy. It's a it's really bad. Is it really like it like the, basically the sound effects and the sound sound all muffled and like like kind of echoey. Yeah, and it's just I just couldn't it couldn't do That's it. That's disappointing. Why would you treat some of the highest rated games in your catalog like that? You know, it doesn't make yeah. a lot of sense. I think that the, the Splinter Cell trilogy was the same same way. Both yeah, from it's Ubisoft. It's, yeah, it is. It's disappointing because, especially you know, Chaos Theory and stuff like that. Those are some of the best, you know, most highly rated games ever. So it's like, I mean, why? if you don't care about sound effects and stuff, but that drove me nuts. I was like, I huh. I tried to ignore it and I couldn't do it. All right, I think it's missing some effects from the PS2 version of the game too. In Sands All of right. Time, it's weird. I wouldn't be surprised. It's really odd. Um, but yeah, it runs fine on PC, and it's uh, it's it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's just you know, it's it's keeping the attention span in check I guess because I have so much other stuff that I'm wanting to play you know I just have to keep focused on the one game but that's always been like hard for me because I have 90 something games installed on my PC you know it's not <laughs> it's not very easy to just focus on one at a time but uh yeah. anyway I'm 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 getting there I'm like a third of the way through the game already so um, I agree it's, it's it's like I have a, that's actually something we can talk about too yeah. I'll, I'll let you finish this but I have lately have been having a severely bad video game ADD. Well, that's that's one of the side effects of the Steam sales for me. I, <laughs> I want to touch on because I have so many games in my backlog that I just need to stop buying games for a while, you know? Yeah. And, well, and that's that's how it is with me on consoles as well. I mean, I literally just dumped a, a traded in a bunch because it was either A, I wasn't going to ever play it, or yeah. B, that I, I didn't think it would be worth playing again or bringing out my old system to play. And I was like, you know what? Then that means it's got to go. Yeah, that's a good. I mean, that's a good philosophy, and you know, you, you get know? you get something in return for them too. You know. Well, so. yeah, and I mean, for example, like I, you know, I looked at. I have Alan Wake on. I have Alan Wake on PC, but I also still right. have my Xbox version. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know, I'm keeping that. I have the collector's edition, and oh, okay. and I've played this game so many times. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that that's a shoe. And same with like Uncharted games. I've replayed those constantly. God of War, but there was a couple games, you know, I had in my collection. Like, you know, I played this once. Conan the Barbarian. I'd, 
Actually, you know, I think I still own that one. Um, still gonna but play that's be that's <laughs> that's because I haven't beat it yet. So that's that was the other thing. If oh, I so the mummy, it, the mummy returns. Or whatever. Oh, no, I, I can't trade in GameStop. To oh, that's right. They don't take those anymore. So they don't take those. But, you know, like, there's just some things that are like... like um, Craigslist, by the way. Oh, no, no. De- Craigslist or eBay, definitely. Yeah. But, um, there's just some games I just don't want to trade in. Like, I have I have all the Resident Evils, and I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to trade those in. I like, Even though Resident Evil, debatably, has gone downhill, depending who you ask, everything. I just, sure. I enjoy them, and they're replayable to me. And then I look at something like Duke Nukem Forever, and I'm like, that game is just so bad, I'm keeping it. <laughs> I didn't mind Duke Nukem Forever as much either, as other actually. people, to be honest. But I, the uh, it was just boring. I thought it wasn't really horrible. But it was a 2004 game that was released in 2012. It's <laughs> a good way to put it. Yeah, or 2011 graphically, yeah. especially. Um, but yeah, that's that's like one of the side effects of having such uh, excess, I guess. Is and especially for me because all my games are on PC. I can't trade them in. I can't get rid yeah. of them. I own them. You know so. Uh, they just sit. You think in, you owe Yeah, them. they just sit. I know. <laughs> they just sit in a <laughs> digital locker, you know, and they'll never. You know, I, I could resell. You can sell your Steam account. They, they just can't find out about it. Or they'll ban it. But, you know, that's the thing is I'm not going to sell my Steam account, and I don't know how much I'd get for it. I think, you know, there's there's a Steam wallet. Uh, what is it? It's, uh, Steam Enhanced Steam or something you can install on your browser. And mm-hmm. it, you can actually find out, like, how much you've spent on games total and stuff like that. And. You know, I spent like an average of four dollars on games or something, you know, per game. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to complain about it. But at the same time, there is a point where you just have to sit back and you go, "Okay, I have literally not completed more than sixty percent of my games," you know, and that's pretty ridiculous in my opinion. So I, I, <laughs> I have finite time in my life left, right? <laughs> so exactly. Exactly. I need to, I need to start, you know, picking and choosing and maybe whittling down the ones I've already paid for. And it'll, well, you know. And, you know, I can relate, especially now that I've had a kid yeah. and I'm kind of getting into the family life. I'm realizing, you know, I only have so many time to replay the ones I do love. Right. And then everything else is kind of filler or for fun. And then if I don't like it or I don't think I'm going to ever want to touch it again, it, it's got to go. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Like, I know some people just don't want to part with their games. I'm one of those people. I don't I don't have, you know, I'm, I have a, a, I'm staring at a Saturn right now. I have an NES. I have a, a Genesis. You know, I don't play them. I don't, I don't hook them up. I don't do anything. They're just kind of sitting there for like decoration, you know, in my room. But like, Ooh. it's you know, and I have a ton of games for each of them, but I just don't play them anymore. And I don't think I get a whole lot for them. I guess that's why I don't sell them. But yeah, the you know, the whole thing is, uh, I guess it's more just kind of like sentimental reasons that I keep them around. Because truth be told, I can play everything that is on those on an emulator, you know, on my PC. Oh, yeah, yeah. In a higher resolution, and you know. Not better frame rate, but you know the same frame rate and a clearer screen <laughs> than the SD screen that I was playing on, you know, fifteen twenty years ago. And it's yeah. you know it's a better overall experience for the most part. And I just keep them around because they're there. And I just I guess they're just kind of like a you know nostalgic kind of thing. But anyway, no, I I can get that. I mean, like it's like I've been playing PS2 games lately and PS1 games. And, yeah, and you know, so I I get that for sure. But speaking of retro, do you have any N64 games? Uh yeah, I do have some games. I don't have an yeah. N64 on me have, right now. Do you have Donkey Kong? Does. No, I I you know I owned. Son of a bitch. I bought it. You want Donkey Kong? Yeah. 64. No, <laughs> I I I did buy it when it came out. Um, and I owned it, but I don't have it right now. I don't have gotcha. it anymore. But yeah, my brother actually has my N64. Uh, I should go get that from him and play some Goldeneye or something. I have Goldeneye. Dude, I have I like. Totally should. I think we have. Per- I think I have Perfect Dark. I have Resident Evil Two, which is kind of funny because now. <laughs> N64 now, me, version of that one's weird. Let me ask you this, since we're talking about retro a little bit here. Yeah. Has there ever been a retro game that you just didn't play and then you went back and played it? Like even on PlayStation 1 or N64 maybe, or even Nintendo, that you, you know, maybe you saw it and you're like, you know, I never played this game. And then, you know, you don't really know why. And then you played it and you ended up really, really liking it. Has um, that happened to you yet? It has or a couple of times. I'm trying to think of what games it was. I mean, it's happened, especially, you know, right when I I went like a five year or so period without playing a lot of games from like 01 to pretty much the entire uh, PS2 GameCube uh, generation because I didn't own a GameCube till 05. And that, I bought that just because I wanted to get back into playing stuff. But, you know, I, I was playing like Counter Strike and PC stuff like every now and then at the time. And uh, that was the first console I'd owned for a long time. So I, I missed a lot of that stuff. And especially a lot of late-gen N64 stuff. 
So I went back and I replayed, uh, or I play. I think I played through Perfect Dark for the first time in like 2005, something like that. And it was it was really cool, and it was funny because it had so uh, so much like stuff you could do compared to first person shooters at the time that were you know AAA or whatever you want to call them, Call of Duty and stuff like that. It was doing stuff that was so in depth that really no shooters today even do. You know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about? Like you're the I don't know. You can, you know, the the hacking and all this different stuff you can yeah, do yeah. if you want. Like it's it's not even you know mandatory to do stuff. Like you you yeah, throw trip like mines and all this stuff. stuff. Yeah, and they have the little you know the the uh, you know optional missions and stuff like that you can do in the in the levels and just you know you shoot guys in the in the limbs specifically and you know they'll react accordingly and stuff like that and I love that. Yeah, yeah you shoot I, yeah. you shoot a guy in the hand in in Call of Duty and it just affects him like you shoot him in the head. You know what I mean? It's it's not any yeah. different. It's it's just weird because those games are so primitive yet so advanced at the same time. And it, it's good to see that feedback that Yeah, you know, that like, kind of like, stuff. Hey, I shot this dude and he's like, "Oh." That kind of stuff kind of catches me off guard. Like for example, I was playing Most Wanted, uh the original Most Wanted, uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted. And uh, it was a PC version that I'm playing now. You can actually mod the hell out of that game, by the way, and make it look pretty. <laughs> make it look pretty nice. But I was playing it just vanilla, and uh, even then, like there's reflections on the road. You know, like real time reflections on the yeah. road when it rains. You know, like water like splashes up on the screen while you're while you're driving around. Uh, just stuff like that. I was like, that game came out in 2005. It's almost 10 years old, and I was just like, wow, I didn't know this version of the game had that kind of stuff going on. It was pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, you know, the PC version of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory is like that too. They actually, it's a really advanced version of the game because uh, they made it for the Xbox and then they ported it to the PC, I think. But the uh, PC version is basically like the definitive version by far, and it, it still yeah, has okay. a lot of features and stuff that you know a lot of it has like parallax mapping and stuff like that that a lot of games don't even include now. <laughs> and so yeah. it has it has a couple of graphical techniques that are advanced by today's standards that. It's just weird because the game's ten years old. So, but yeah, I don't know. There's there's a couple of games that's happened to me with, but yeah, I just had that happen which one, recently. So. Which one? Which one for you? Um, I was talking about this on my show. If you watched it, but uh, yeah, no, I totally <laughs> but, uh, saw it. No, but uh, it was a. Uh, I saw it on eBay. It was uh-huh. like ten dollars. I was like, you know, I had always passed this game up. I didn't play it, and I was trying to think why. You know, like why? Because I, as you know, I'm a pretty heavy connoisseur of playing everything. Right. So, you know, it's odd for Very me to come eclectic. across a game. What's that? Very eclectic. Yeah, so it's 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 odd for me to come across a game I haven't either A, heard of, or B, played. Uh-huh. So I see it, and I was like, you know what, I'll, just, I'll go ahead and give it a shot. And it could really be shitty now, because especially some of these older games are really, really roughly dated. So that game is called Akuji the Heartless. Okay. It, it, it sounds like an it, adult swim show. Well... <laughs> It looks like it has this voodoo dude on it, and I I can only think that at the time when it came out, I was either busy or waiting for Shadow Man to come out or, like, Legacy of Kane. You know, stuff that, that to me, from a glance, kind of looked like it'd be a similar game. And, you know, back then I had to be pickier with what I bought or played, especially. So I just I just think I never got around to it because of that. So I I decided to pick it up just on a whim. And, dude, it's like a... The best way I can describe it is it's like if you took Mario 64 and in a way and made it uh made it very graphic like dark and but still like a collectathon uh-huh. kind of game but yet it's like I said it's dark and voodoo and blood and I mean it's basically you have a hub kind of like Crash Bandicoot where there's a portal that you go into for different levels and and once you you know get enough of these items in throughout the whole amount of levels you can go to the boss and then after that you can go to the next hub so it's like this platformer with hack and slash, dark, you know, dark theme. And I was just like, I was hooked. I put it in for like an hour. I put it in to check it out, and I played it for like an hour straight till I beat the first world. And huh. I was like, man, it's even got me. It's got it had me hooked. And I was like, I felt stupid for never playing it. You know, it was one of those like, I can't believe I never played this. I'm I'm loving it right now. I can't believe this. This is like a game that's made in two, no 1994. Wow, really? I think it was 94. No, 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 1998. Well, still. Still. <laughs> I uh now I used old. to there used to be like a mom and pop uh, game store right around the corner from me and I used to make it a point to go in there and just randomly pick a game basically without knowing anything about it and then bring it home and just give it a play you know just to see what it's like because it was 
you know, they're like three, four bucks for like an Xbox game or something, like a launch game. <laughs> and yeah. I found a couple that were that were kind of fun, but I'd never heard of before. Um, I had I had never heard of uh, Grab by the Ghoulies, but I oh. found it, and it was what like it was like three dollars or something. It's actually a pretty cool little game. Oh, I own it. Do you? I don't know how many. Yeah, I, I don't know I how like many people it. have played it, but yeah, it's 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 it's. it's it's weird, I guess you'd say. It's it's weird because it's almost like a Nintendo game on a Microsoft console. Yeah, well, it doesn't make well, a lot other, of sense. <laughs> the other thing that's interesting about it is that even now it still looks pretty good because of its art style. The yeah, cell shaded. That's true. You know, yeah. it looks good. I was playing it not too long ago, and I was like, oh, you know, really? what? it's just fun. Yeah, that's the thing is, I think people were just expecting, you know, everything that Rare put out for a long time was like just gold you know it was like yeah and then you know there was a big transition when they when they got bought by microsoft and uh i guess you could say quality dip a little bit but you know the games are still fun they just i think people were just expecting perfect dark levels well, see, of quality every single think, time out from then on and it just i think their happen. quality dipped when, when it went to, came to next gen the 360 well that, that's yeah that's what i mean really, well because there wasn't a huge gap in time between that that time right there was like i guess it was a couple of years wasn't it because i think they got bought in 2003 well they released like uh conquer the remake on the xbox which was pretty damn well good yeah that came out in 05 uh, yeah then and the uh, grab by the ghoulies came out before that or after uh, either either before or after i can't remember but i mean yeah you had those two games and then you know the other thing is okay so once they came out after. on the 360 or the once the 360 came out yeah they had perfect dark which to a lot of people's just abysmal and nothing like the original. Perfect Dark Zero. Yeah, so, yeah Perfect Dark Zero. See, that's the and thing had, though. Like, I think Perfect Dark Zero is all right. I don't think it's. I don't think it's a horrible game. It's just nowhere near the quality of Perfect Dark. Obviously. No, I think but, they were focused too much on how much bells and whistles of graphics we've been. Yeah, well, the texture quality in that game is still outstanding. But the yeah. uh, the the multiplayer was actually fun as hell in that game. I thought. I don't know. Yeah. It's, you couldn't jump and stuff. I remember people getting on to it for that, like a shooter you can't jump in, and I'm like, really? Come on! Like yeah. you can't and jump. C, you can't jump you in Bullet had... Storm, and Bullet Storm's one of my favorite shooters ever. Oh, I love Bullet Storm. So <laughs> we're, you're preaching to the choir, bro. There you go. <laughs> but uh, uh, I actually still have a copy of that. So, um, but but see, then you had Cameo, and and to be honest, I think in a lot of ways, Cameo was the last rare like game mm -hmm. that you know that they brought out because. Uh, Cameo was actually, and it makes sense. Cameo was in development for the GameCube for for the oh, longest yeah, yeah. time, so it makes sense that that still had that kind of Nintendo feel. But then Cameo was all right. I yeah. I have Cameo, and I've played probably through half of it. I just thought it, I just got tired of it because you know there's like three things you can morph into, and it just it's just repetitive as hell. Well, but, I, I'll tell you what, the end has uh -huh. a bunch of story that blew me away. I was really? like at the time, yeah, I was like, oh, the uh, ninety percent of the game, the uh, plot dump. And I was like, "Oh, whoa! <laughs> well, I'll I have, didn't expect that." I'll just YouTube it or something. But yeah, I would. I don't have but, a, I don't have a 360 anymore. That's why. Uh, but yeah. So, so then I'll probably get, pick uh, one up just so I can play the games I have that I can't get rid of on Craigslist for whatever reason. People don't want the games anyway. So then you get uh, <laughs> then you get Banjo Kazooie, which was totally not what people were wanting. The way no, they made but it. I liked that one. I thought it was fun, but it's just yeah, like you said, it's nowhere near what people were wanting. It's a totally different game. It's like a you know you build vehicles and drive them around and oh and it looks gorgeous do. yeah it, it does really but you know viva pinata is okay it's an interesting yeah. game it's not i don't know it's not fantastic i have it i have it on pc strangely enough but, but i mean after that that's about it it's like then now that's yeah. you know now they connect all connect stuff yeah now they're relegated to the connect which is a shame because now the connect isn't even like on microsoft's radar anymore <laughs> you know because yeah. they've they've clearly just thrown in the towel on it well, but you know you know i think it's bullshit that they that they teased conquer with project spark oh that was silly i didn't get that, that I, mean, I, I, I just think that was a big slap to the face that i think i tweeted right after that i said note to microsoft that's not what you do with old ips <laughs> no, you don't I, just like throw that in and you especially don't joke about well it's been 10 years since i've had a game guess i better make one myself like Fuck you! I'm not making yeah. a game. You do it. <laughs> I mean, I thought that was really cruel. Like, yeah. You know, and and I'm just hoping. I'm hoping that that even though he's <laughs> going to be playable in Project Spark, uh -huh. I'm hoping that they're secretly working on another one. They might be. I mean, I don't know why they would tease that if they weren't at least planning on maybe a revamp or something like a re-release, HD re-release, maybe. I don't know, but 
you know, but speaking of that, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're kind of going all over the place, but you know, whatever. Um, we're kind of <laughs> exactly jumping from right. one thing to the next. We, we sort of. Hit... I mean, we're still on the retro stuff, but. Yeah, but, um, you know, speaking of these games, though. Yeah. Uh, have you noticed it's like there's a lot of IPs that like Sony themselves or, or Xbox, Microsoft has had and they, and they just didn't ever do anything else with like, for example, you have uh, Genji, you know, you had a new Genji come oh, out wow. when PS3 came out. Yeah. Nothing. You had a uh, what happened to uh, what happened to the Capcom one? Uh, what was that one? Oh, Onimusha. Onimusha. Yeah. What happened to that? Well, I don't know. Well, That's they made Capcom, like they made but... fifteen games in that series in like a four year period, and then it just died. That's yeah, crazy. They, I don't know, but I mean, but for example, like uh, okay, so for Microsoft, you got like Brute Force. They never did another one of those. Huh. You know, you got stuff like. Um, well, they have uh, the one they're bringing back, Phantom Dust, right? Yeah, and that's that's, that's odd. Random as hell, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, what? I mean, it has a it has a good following, but it's just yeah, I don't know it's kind of odd. It. It's so long later, but but I mean, there's just countless like franchises. Like they have a they even have a they had a, a I don't know if you knew this they had a platforming game called Voodoo Vince. I've heard of that. I didn't know. Yeah, about I it. mean, they had that, and then you had stuff like um, on PS3. You also had the Untold Legends game, and they had some on the PSP, then on the PS3, and then it's like, nope, no well, more. Microsoft after PS3. needs to bring back Crimson Skies if they're going to do yeah. anything like old school and bring anything back, other than Halo. Obviously, they need to bring back Crimson Skies because that game was awesome. I still have that one. I'll still play it on my Xbox every now and then. But that's guys, Mech Warrior. Yeah, Mech Warrior. They didn't they try a new Mech Warrior last generation. I think it just fell flat on its face. I don't well, that remember. I think that was. Um, what am I thinking? No, of? I think you're thinking of a uh, front front mission. Maybe I don't know. They're, but yeah, it's it, it's. Well, just, they have Mech just, Warrior online now, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it's just amazing how many IPs are out there from companies that, that just get dropped, like boop. They don't exist anymore. We're not going to make any more. And it's and I mean, some of them it's franchises that they sold. You know, they sold well. I mean, hell, Dino Crisis did well, and then they released three, oh and my it was God. like, <laughs> you know, they released Dino three. Crisis it's like dinosaurs three. in space. Let's get this going. Yeah, people just pretend that one never happened. <laughs> um, oh God, that yeah. One there's a lot of there's a lot of dead stuff out there that I wish would come back at some point, but we'll see. I mean, it has to, especially now, it has to have a good, you know, selling point. They think it has to have a good audience. Like, look at Crytek. They own uh, Time Splitters. And they're not working on a game. Why? Because they don't think it would sell, you know? In their, That's just a shame. And this is, I mean, this is bad uh, when, you, when you put it like this, but they think that Homefront has a better chance of selling than Time Splitters. You know what I mean? Like, that's... <laughs> Is I that think the that pretty much says it all. Now? Pretty much. Um, yeah, I don't like I, the the new Homefront. I think looks pretty cool. Honestly, it has like some crisis. Uh, you don't like Stuff. crisis, but it has did some, hear, some did, open. Did yeah. You, what? Did you hear the rumor about Crytek possibly going out of business? Mm hmm. I read that. Um, I'd believe it. Honestly, they haven't had the best of luck with sales. I'd imagine. And then, you know, they they seemed like they they were kind of unsure about they kind of restructured into being a free to play studio the past couple of years. And, you know, I don't know, like I, I never got the, the full on commitment vibe from them. Like, no, we're going full into this free to play thing. Cause I don't think that they're completely sure that it's a good industry to go into. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. cause it's really fickle and it, it's really hit or miss with whether or not you're going to be um, able to sustain your business on that model. Because, you know, you have to be something like League of Legends, basically, if you're going to be, you know, uh, it's be around. It's becoming to the point where there's so many free-to-play games. Yeah, that too. Like, it's really saturated. It, you're just wondering how... It's it's like being a YouTuber and expecting to take off. It's right. just luck of the draw sometimes. Well, that was what I was reading was their, uh, their G-Face or whatever online... God, it's the worst name ever. But their online services, you know, for their free-to-play stuff was crash and burning outside of Russia. Like, it took off in Russia, and that was the first market they put it in as a test. And they were like, oh, this is great. We're making tons of money, and you know, it's going to be great all, all around the world. Well, it turns out the Russian market is kind of different than the rest of the world. <laughs> and yeah. uh, nobody wants to play your, your generic game, you know? It's it's like, I don't know. They I, I really feel like they've just misread everything. And I don't – I'm glad – look, I'm glad the guys, you know, in Crytek uh, USA and Austin, Texas, formerly Vigil, you know, have jobs right now. But I don't know how much longer they're going to have jobs unfortunately mm -hmm. and i don't know that it was the smartest idea for crytek to buy to open an office down there because mm -hmm. i don't i i i don't know their no i don't know their financials obviously but 
it just seems like they've been mismanaged for the past few years and I hate that personally because I actually like their games but eh, you know it's a shame to see some to see anyone struggling really um especially you know because I love games I like I want everyone to succeed I don't want anyone to go away you know and especially well, that- they're one of the leading tech you know companies out there I think I feel they push the medium forward with their engine you know yeah well and it was interesting reading the that that rumor piece because mm. they said i i didn't realize they well and i don't know if it's true or not but the it caught my eye when it said that that they haven't started working on rise 2 because there's there's arguments over who owns the ip yeah with them and microsoft know. and that's that's interesting because owning your own yeah. ip has become a really big deal with publisher or developers right now um because you know that's the whole thing and that's why sunset overdrive is exclusive to xbox one because sony wouldn't let insomniac own the ip you know they wanted it Mm -hmm. for themselves just like they own ratchet and clank and if any company out there would would understand the perils or the downside of not owning your own ip it would be insomniac because they don't own either resistance or ratchet and clank they're two biggest franchises you know and yep. what other games have they made other than those games? I think they've only made Fuse. Uh, yeah, Fuse and uh, one like you know, twenty years ago <laughs> on the PlayStation One, they made a shooter called Disruptor. That's about it. So, other than those, you know, two games, they've never owned their own IP. So, for them to own Sunset Overdrive was a huge deal to them. Whether or not it'll actually pan out into something, you know, successful, because they own Fuse. But Fuse didn't take off like they were hoping, and EA's dropped it. You know they're not making a sequel, I don't think, are they? No, so I, I think no. it was supposed to be a trilogy or something. They're only making the one game, but the uh, the whole yeah, that's a big hot button issue right now with developers is owning your own IP. And I guess to Crytek, Rise is worth more than whatever Microsoft would pay for it. I don't know. In the long run, they think that, but I don't know. I don't know how how Rise sold. I don't know how it did. Uh, as a launch yeah, I title, I, I think I saw some people on Gaff saying um, Phil Spencer said he was happy with the sales, with the game's performance. Mm-hmm. Whether you know, I don't. It has it hasn't performed like Titanfall or anything, you know. So, but uh, I would guess that just means it's made money at the very least for Microsoft. I don't know if it's made money for Crytek <laughs> at this point, but yeah, I don't know. It is interesting. Um, I'd like to see them stick around though, man, because uh, you know. I just I hate the thought of another studio going under, especially one that they have like 800 employees. That's a lot. That's a whole lot of people. So I hope they I hope they make it through. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about: oh, the the Steam sale <laughs> that we started off on. Steam yeah. sale is is going on, and I haven't really bought a lot because um, the whole reason is like I said, I, I'm just kind of like backing off. The first day in a couple of years uh, it was yesterday where I looked at everything on sale and said, I don't own any of that. <laughs> and um, at that point, I just kind of sat there and I was like, you know, I think I'm sitting this one out. Like, there will be a couple of things I buy. Like, I might buy Spelunky or something like that when it's, you know, it's like 3 or $4. I bought State of Decay yesterday because my, my roommate's been playing that, you know, since launch. And it was 5 bucks. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll I love that in. game. Yeah, it looks it looked like fun when I watched him play it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's a modding community for it too. But uh, that'll be interesting to to dive into. I always like you know kind of getting in late on a game after some people have had a chance to like kind of pick it apart, especially one because mm-hmm. that game's on CryEngine and there's a there's an engine editor for CryEngine. You know, so you can make mods, and uh, you know people just go crazy with that engine, that and Unreal Engine, but. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna be buying a lot. On uh, I actually asked a, asked on Twitter this morning about Final Fantasy VII on PC, and Adam told me like you know it has DRM, and I was like, oh, that's cool. So I'll just pass. I'll just stick with emulators. <laughs> and I realized like I could just stick with emulators, you know, because I have emulators on my phone. I have them on my PC. It's not. A, it's not a big deal to buy old stuff like that. But anyway, um, well, other, another thing I wanted to touch on tonight was the the. the Watchdogs patch and what it's what happened on PC. So in the past week, it's a damn shame. <laughs> past, well, man, the, the game launched in a really bad state. It, I mean, it it's it's I almost heard. it's almost unplayable on the next PC. next to highest settings. Um, you know, because I have I don't have the top of the line card anymore, but it's you know a decent card, and 
it has two gigs. I have two gigs of VRAM on my card and my graphics card. And they recommend that you have three or more if you're going to run ultra textures. And ultra textures are, you know, just ridiculously, uh, I don't know. They're, they're not really super high quality, so I don't know why it has such trouble running. But the problem is there are people with $1,000 Titans, you know, that have six gigabytes of VRAM, double the, you know, requested amount, and even they can't play the game because what happens is apparently it streams in two textures instead of just one while you're like driving around and um it just creates this bottleneck for no real reason other than just to be a pain in the ass so um so my question is this if it does that on the pc versions what's yeah. stopping it from happening on the console versions apparently the unified uh memory pool is what's causing it to not do it on consoles because you know there's just one memory pool now there's not two separate ones like on pc you have the you know the cpu ram whatever and then you have the gpu ram right and it's you know split up like the xbox 360 was and the ps3 was and the xbox one still is so i don't understand that but you know they have a ton of ram now so they can they can just choose and pick whichever gets used at whatever point you know and and that kind of doesn't translate over to the pc directly you have to kind of change how it works for the pc you know to go from unified to a split pool anyway so wally instead of taking the time to optimize it on pc it seems like they just kind of ported it directly over and just kind of said eh, if they want to run it they'll just buy new hardware you know and it's like well it still doesn't even run properly on on way more you know than recommended specs so Something's wrong. And the thing is, they released a patch, and the patch didn't do anything. <laughs> and there were people saying it actually made performance worse somehow. Um, I mean, I was able to complete the game, and it, it wasn't the most ideal experience, because while I'm driving around, it will literally freeze for, you know, three or four seconds at times, and then pick back up again. I mean, it, it, there's a really, really bad stuttering while you're driving around. It's, it's horrendous. Um, and that's on high textures. There's which are actually medium. If you go into the config file, it's actually high, medium, low. And in, in game, it's ultra high and medium. <laughs> so whatever for whatever reason, they just relabeled them in game. But the ultra quote unquote textures in the game are, I haven't even bothered with them. Cause if I even select that as an option, I'm looking at probably a minute or so before the hideout like loads up whenever I select, you know, continue game or something because it's, it's just so bad. So, um, some modders have actually, I think, I think this guy took the, uh, file unpacker for Far, uh, Far Cry 3, the Dunia engine, mm -hmm. and, uh, like some, you know, some, some modder, uh, when Far Cry 2, I think it was 2, came out, made, made a, a file unpacker that, that lets you basically you know, un uncompress all of the files from the game engine for the Dunia engine. And it, Far Cry 3 uses the same engine, and then this engine, the Disrupt engine, is really similar, apparently. It's so similar, you can use the same file unpacker to get into the files of Watch Dogs' uh, engine. So anyway, so some guy, like, started going through, and he found all this stuff, like, buried in there, and it's literally labeled, like, E3 2012 gas station explosion <laughs> stuff like that like it's still in there and he hasn't figured out a way to re-enable them yet but the fact they're still in there and they're clearly labeled you know these bullshit names like no it's definitely was faked you know what i mean so um that's gotten some people up and up in arms about some stuff it's i still i still maintain my original stance that they never meant for that to actually be playable you know but yeah um, if well, they can I mean, somehow get it into the game, I'd love that because the gas station explosion now is pathetic. It's a tiny little thing. <laughs> that, I mean, the thing is with the with the whenever they show game early, it's you just got to consider a work in progress. Yeah. And 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 you they are basically you know like this is what they're t they should always put like this is our target render. You know, I think yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree with that. You know, they should let people know, hey, this is our target for. You know, this we don't have a full game. Well, you know, yet, the but thing this is, is what we're aiming for. They'll say like they'll say not representative of final product, right? And yeah. what that used to mean was, this looks like shit compared to what it will look like eventually. 
Now yeah. it means this looks better than what it's going to look like eventually. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it's Which still is, the same wording, and people just yeah. people just kind of take it to mean. At first, when they see that, they're like, "Oh, so this looks horrible. It's, it's going to look better. That's amazing. This yeah. looks so good." And then you know the game ends up being toned down from where they showed it, and it's kind well, of disappointing. And, and see, then then you see you get somebody like EA that when they had their conference, you could tell they were trying to avoid that by saying all their footage is prototype footage, right? You know, right. like prototype. But then it got to just become comical because every damn thing they showed, it was like prototype like prototype, do you guys not have prototype. an actual product in production right now or yeah and, but and, and pe- people didn't like that either the, so it's, the, it's kind of one of those you can't win it you can't win the thing with uh with watchdogs though is these modders like they got into the files and and they turned on things like headlight shadows which is weird because the actual e3 2012 demo didn't even have headlight shadows so they're in the game engine for whatever reason and they weren't even in that demo so it's kind of nice to have them on. They they don't they're glitchy. They don't like you know they don't work 100. percent They flicker sometimes and but I still think it, it it adds a lot to the atmosphere. You know when you're just driving around and you you shine your headlights on something, especially in the cockpit view. You know you shine your headlights on a guy and he's running in front of you. He's you're trying he's trying to avoid getting hit or something and you just see his shadow. You know fly on the wall. It's it just makes more sense. You know it, it's more yeah. um more of a complete kind of image in your mind. So anyway, but. The guy was messing around, I guess, with LOD settings or something, and he ended up making it run better for people than the patch that Ubisoft eventually released does. And it's just weird. It's like, why can one guy who claims he's never modded anything in his life, who is just obsessed with settings and seeing what they do and things like that, you know, why why can he make the game run better and look better in people's opinions than Ubisoft with a team of thousands of people, you know, at their disposal. Why, why can this one guy do it and the others? And there's another guy named Maldo, and Maldo is a guy that modded the hell out of Crisis 2. And he mm-hmm. actually went through and he, t- you know, he did a really good job with the mods for Crisis 2. He made his own textures. And what he did was he literally went out to places and scouted locations and found similar looking architecture and took his own pictures and then made textures out of his own high-res pictures. And it's just, it's incredible work he did. But he is actually taking apart the... he's He broke he broke down the problem, like, what happens with the texture streaming and why it stutters. And he actually released, like, his own little kind of test to fix it. And I tried it, and it worked pretty well. Like, I was like, wow. And he actually got uh, a form... It's, it's not ready for being played yet, but he's working on getting ultra textures playable on two gigabyte or less video cards, which is crazy. I mean, like I said, this is one guy doing the work that <laughs> thousands at, at Ubisoft apparently don't care enough to do. You know, so. you know, see, it's so when you have people like that, that are that good at it, where yeah. it's like a company, somebody needs to hire that dude. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, like Crytek did, uh, there's a, uh, there's mods out the ass for the original crisis. And there's this guy named X zero and X zero made his own shaders for the game and it makes the first crisis look almost photorealistic and now he actually does the shader the shader work on cry engine at crytek so they hired him <laughs> on i know the guy um that we had on the podcast a few years ago uh papadopoulos that guy the, yeah the community manager for remedy a former community manager he went on to work at some developer now just because of the the, work, the stuff that he actually ended up doing you know like yeah, just wasn't, for the community. wasn't it crytek was it crytek I don't know. I, I think he just said it was a it was a company in Germany, but he didn't say which one. But it probably was Crytek. <laughs> I don't know many companies in Germany, um, gaming companies. But maybe he's at BMW or something. But yeah, so I mean, they do hire people from the community into these companies sometimes, which is nice to see because you know, like who knows their games better than the people that fucking spend you know countless hours working in, on mods and stuff for it for free. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, Valve Valve is really well known for that too, right? They hire a lot of a lot of people that do mods and stuff. Yeah, I'm, too bad I'm they don't bring, make still any games. surprised. Still surprised they don't. Uh, they haven't hired the guys that did Black Mesa. Did you play Black Mesa last year or year No, but last? I saw pictures and stuff. It is really good. It's surprisingly good. Um, they didn't. So anyway. They didn't. They didn't hire them because they don't make games anymore. <laughs> they make experiences and. Uh, yeah. Games as a service or whatever, but well, they don't. They make games. They just don't make games that I play. I don't play Dota, but yeah. So anyway, that that was one of the things I wanted to touch on was the the mods that can't that are apparently on the way for for Watch Dogs. You know, like I hope that there's a modding scene that that forms around that game because I actually like the game a lot. But the uh, 
I don't know. The, the, the response from Ubisoft has been lackluster, to say the least. Um, there was another thing I wanted to mention real quick. It was the... Uh, I don't know if you saw this article. It was about... It was an interview. I think it was a podcast, actually. It was an interview with some guy from AMD, and he was talking about NVIDIA uh, coding. You know, they, they have a thing called NVIDIA GameWorks. Mm-hmm. Game works, and uh, you know it's it's where they do like exclusive deals with you know developers. Like Watch Dogs had a sim, you know, uh, an exclusive whatever exclusive features like TXAA anti-aliasing and stuff like that put in. Um, and he accuses Nvidia of literally coding their games to run poorly on AMD hardware. <laughs> it's basically what it is, and he's saying you know it's it's toxic basically. Um, it's really interesting to, to, I mean, it's kind of like a no duh kind of thing, you know, like, but at the same time, it does kind of suck because you have, uh, AMD who does all these things like Mantle and Mantle's like an API, like DirectX basically. And it allows developers to get like down to the, you know, what they call code to the metal, which is basically, um, typically in consoles, you know, you have one set of fixed hardware for the entire console duration, right? Mm -hmm. And all developers can get down to, like, the very, you know, the bare essentials of the power of it, basically. Well, you can't do that with PC because you have to run Windows in the background, which is a resource hog, and then you have to have, you know, all these infinite combinations of hardware you can have. So Mantle allows developers to get down into, like, the code, you know, to, to the raw power of the hardware, basically, is what they're aiming for. But, uh... You know, a, uh, Nvidia can actually can actually utilize Mantle. Like AMD doesn't prevent them from doing so. Whereas if you know Nvidia were to have their own type of Mantle kind of API, they would probably screw over AMD users. It's, it's yeah. weird because AMD doesn't apparently they're not you know dirty in that way anyway. I'm sure they do some stuff on their own, but you know apparently they're not. I don't know. They just don't think the same. It's kind of weird. We're completely different. Yeah. They're completely different until they get caught doing something else, you know. <laughs> until mm-hmm. until Mantle is secretly overheating AM or Nvidia cards or something, you know what I mean? But <laughs> at the same time it's just it's just kinda strange that AMD has a apparently like a totally different philosophy. And I think he even went on to say something, you know, because he used the example of Tomb Raider from last year. Tomb Raider was an AMD uh they call it gaming evolved as their uh, tagline in their slogan. So it was a gaming evolved title, and that means that they they had an exclusivity deal with AMD for features like Tress Effects, which is the hair, you know. Um, and you can use Tress Effects on an Nvidia. I can use it on my Nvidia card, not as well as AMD cards, but it doesn't cripple my game to being you know unplayable. Whereas if you try to use Physics, which is an an, an Nvidia uh, special effect, basically an Nvidia exclusive effect, because they bought the company that made the Physics chips. Mm-hmm. Um, if you try to use Physics on an AMD card, like for example, in Mirror's Edge, Mirror's Edge literally crawls to like two frames a second, and you cannot play it at all. You know why? Why? Because you're still alive. You're still alive <laughs> again in a you, know, you know what? Chicken butt. You know why? Chicken thigh. So. <laughs> But that's the thing is is AMD just does it. they just play differently. I don't know what they do. I'm sure I'm absolutely 100% sure they're guilty of something equally dirty. I'm just not sure what it is. So, you know, that's just the thing though. I'm an Nvidia guy. Like I I went from AMD to Nvidia because a- Nvidia has a lot more customiz- uh, customizable options and things like that, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I just I I don't approve of them doing that, but it won't stop me from buying their cards. So anyway, um won't stop me Having a good time, having a good time. Well, st- oh wow, busting out the queen. I am busting out. Is that the new one from them, or is that I an older one? No, that's an old one. Oh, is it? I was being sarcastic. So I know, I know. <laughs> I was playing into it. Damn no, it. you weren't. Yes, you were I was. not. You were serious. Come on, how would they have a new one? Come on. How would they have a new one? Yeah. Isn't uh, Adam, what's his name, from uh, from American Idols, their singer or something? Uh, one of the guys from American Idol, the gay one. Surprise! <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> one of the other things. What was the other thing we were gonna touch on? I can't remember. Uh, just like just what I'd been playing. So, um, you've been playing something. 
And that's it, well, everybody. Uh, so yeah, what did you learn yeah. tonight? Well, like uh, Wonderful 101. Oh, yeah. Wonderful 101. Tell us about Wonderful 101. Tell me about Wonderful 101 because I haven't played much of it. Okay, well, I had neither. I had owned it since it came out. And I, I hated the demo, a, by the way. Yeah, I actually have a signed copy from the creator with you know his, himself. So, you know, I, I was like, yeah, yeah I should play this. But hmm? Hideki Kamiya. Yes, I do. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but uh, anyway, uh, and and you know it's it it's kind of interesting because the the perspective's kind of like up above, almost a Pikmin like type of fashion. Mm-hmm. But it's it's very much a hardcore beat 'em up game. Um, the the interesting thing about it is you use the right stick or the draw pad, the touch pad, if you want to draw symbols to create like change weapons. And you know I heard a lot of people say it was very cumbersome. And you know after playing it. I think using the stick, it's kind of become like second nature. I don't really have a big problem. So you and use I'm able the stick? To, yeah, I use the okay. stick. And, I, and I'm able to do it pretty quickly, actually. But another thing that I found out when you know doing some research online is that a lot of people were having problems because they couldn't block or they couldn't dodge. Well, the problem is, is when you do the first level, which is almost like a very, very basic tutorial, you don't really need those abilities. And then you can go to a store, and in the store... You, there's these two units, and they basically, if you look at them, they're they're really cheap, and you can afford them right away with what you've already earned in the game. Which, if you look at everything else, it's like no, 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 no. So your gut instinct would be buy these two things, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because that's all I can afford. Well, apparently some people didn't, and they were holding on to their money, and then they went through the next level where you do need to block or you do need to dodge, and they did, they didn't have the ability to do it, and they got nice. frustrated, and pissed off. But I mean, yeah, dude, it does have I, a it does have a, a buy system similar to Devil May Cry, right? Kind of. In between and every, levels, you know, every time you go through a level, the a stage, so to speak, there's basically missions, and each one has like A, B, C, or whatever, and there's different stages. But every time you beat a level, it lets you go and buy these things. But I've only beaten the first main mission, mm-hmm. and I think there's nine of them. But dude, the that first main mission had so much awesome action in it, like more, like some some games wish to have that much action, hmm. and that well done. And, I mean, it culminates in a nice boss battle, and, and it's really intense. And, I, you know, there's a part in that boss battle. Did you ever play Bayonetta? Yeah, did I did. Did you beat it? I did, yeah. Uh, let's just say this. The first boss battle of that first mission, like the very first big boss battle that ends that mission, yeah. there's a sequence like in Bayonetta where you're falling and jumping from pieces of building okay. as, the, as you're falling from the above. You know, if you remember in Bayonetta, there's a part where you're jumping around and there's like a laser shooting at you and... And all that. I don't know if you remember. There's no, uh, there's no Panzer Dragoon level, is there? Yes, there is. Oh, oh my god. There no, is. There's not, levels where you're not aiming in and shooting. I'm talking about in Wonderful 101. No, in Wonderful 101, there's parts where well, oh, you're okay. aiming and shooting. It's like an on rail shooter. Yeah, okay. I hated, also parts that I are like hated that that uh, that level in Bayonetta personally, but whatever. Like Space Harrier level. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, I, I couldn't stand that level. Wasn't it actually? It was like a like a the actual level from Space Harrier, right? I think, I think so. It was. it was very similar. I think it actually was the yeah. Anyway, <laughs> this is a little but weird, yeah, weird I mean, side. But I mean, it's, seriously, like it's just it's weird to me to see that so many people have not either played that or didn't buy it. And mm-hmm. I mean, I granted, I'm kind of a hypocrite. I own, but I owned it. I bought. You're talking it about Bayonetta? No. Oh, well, you're talking Wonderful 101. Well, actually, I'd say both. When I think, <laughs> in reality, both of them. Speaking of which, I'm so. I'm really excited about that that uh, free Bayonetta thing. On oh that. yeah, but. Oh, and by the way, that that whole thing has been cleared up that I did the rant about. Oh yeah. Yeah, it is actually being offered now for free with a digital purchase too. So my rant yeah, was for naught. There. But um, people ser- seriously just still accept free shit when you get it. Just God, tone down the bitching. Anyway. Um, yeah, I know, right? yeah. So wonderful one one thumbs up. You like it? Oh, oh yeah, definitely. And I haven't beat it. You probably wow. just like, you probably like the first level. I bet you'll fucking hate the eight next eight, but. You know, it's funny you say that because I think the the first mission's crazy, yeah. and everybody tells me that's played it, beat it. The they're worst. like, "Dude, you have no idea what huh. you're in store for." Wow, that's crazy. It, How long did it take you to get through the first level? Uh, about an hour, a little over an hour. Wow, so it's like a nine ten hour game then. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Um, I'll I've owned it for a while. I just have, I've never. I mean, my Wii U. Like I I like the Wii U. I just forget I have it sometimes. That's kind of so. what happens to me. <laughs> It's just kind of like, oh wow, look at that thing right in front of me. Oh yeah, but you mean the thing without a dust on it? Well, I like the new, yeah, pretty much. I like the new, um, the quick start features, kind of nice. 
It's it's cool. Yes. It, I don't think it actually makes it any quicker to actually start into the into the game. It's just less touching the screen and going in through menus and stuff. But yeah, I think I think actual time wise, it still takes the same amount of time. But it it feels faster. So, um, but yeah, I mean, look, kudos to them for you know even bothering with that. Like you know, they didn't have to. They didn't have to go through and and try to make it at least seem faster. So. I give them props for all that stuff, and I'm I'm really looking forward to Bayonetta too, though. So. Oh hell yeah! I mean, it, I, I can I, like I said, you need to play Wonderful One One beforehand because people who okay. played both those games said yeah. that Wonderful One One just destroys Bayonetta for for the Jeez. for the craziness, and I have a feeling Bayonetta Two is gonna just top them all. Well, Bayonetta Two looks amazing, but that's neither here nor there. The uh, the port of Bayonetta 1 looks outstanding as well. One of my favorite things about the Wii U is I think V-Sync is mandatory, so there's no screen tearing ever in anything. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, for whatever reason, Nintendo is able to get pretty solid frame rates out of their games, like solid 60, you know, not not 60 with drops. Like, Wonderful 101, 60 with drops, like bad drops, you know what I mean? But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Nintendo's for the upcoming Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2 from what I've seen anyway like I didn't see any frame drops hardly it's crazy especially with all the shit going on so I'm looking forward to that just because of that just because of like all the technical issues from the 360 version being ironed out for the the Wii U version so yeah it'll, it should be like the definitive version hopefully um, and you know plus like the new the, the added content looks pretty cool the, the, oh yeah the, the different uh, costumes. And yeah, stuff. I want to. Uh, you can flip the visor up and down in the middle of cutscenes on <laughs> on command, like when you want to. I was like, oh, see, that's and, awesome. and you know, that's it's not a big deal, but see, it's <laughs> stuff like that that makes me think. Dude, that, like, I'm you looking know... forward to doing that more than ninety percent of AAA games coming out. <laughs> like seriously, I can't wait to just flip that visor up and down, like all all game long. It's gonna be hilarious. But yeah, it just cracked. It's just stuff like Fuck that, really. Like it's face. like they didn't need to do that, and they did it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right, we're we're heading down a path we cannot come back from. So. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, you know what you were mentioning though is kind of funny because it's an it's a it's an entirely different podcast altogether. But it one is. of the things one of the things that uh, you touched on was people not using mechanics right or you know that kind of stuff. And I was tweeting today about. Killzone Shadowfall, and that's one of the games where, um, the more I play it, I don't want to say the, I don't I don't I don't think it's a great game by any stretch, but I just I don't think it's that bad personally, and I have some issues with it obviously, but um, I don't know I I just feel like there's mechanics in there that people just don't know about or they just don't want to use them and they just pretend that there's a problem when if they just use the mechanics the game affords you there wouldn't be a problem. And people are like, well, I shouldn't have to do that. And I'm like, you know what? You're not even well, going to bother. What are we talking about in more regards to mechanics? Like, you, well, okay, there's, there's, a guy on, there's a guy on Gaff, and he was saying, like, oh, well, it's, it's like, I always get attacked by enemies, and I, can never, I never know when they're coming. They just come out of nowhere. And I'm like, you do know you can scan the level around you through walls and find where the enemies are before you actually encounter them, right? And then you can <laughs> stealth up behind them and kill them and not make noise, or you can, you know what I mean? And instead, he's just like, well, I shouldn't have to do that. And I'm like, what the fuck do they put it in the game for if you don't want to do it? It's stupid. Yeah. Now, I see, mean, people just now make see, it hard for themselves for no reason. Well, it's funny because, you know, I, I think it's it's really funny seeing taking a glance at people like that. Because, for example, you get you get one side of the spectrum where, like, for example, Skyward Sword, people bitch because it's just always telling you what oh. to do or how to do something. Yeah. But then you take a game that doesn't tell you what right, to do right. all the time and people are like, I don't know what to that's do. Why I'm Nintendo, that's why Nintendo puts these ridiculous tutorials in their games. Because now, of people that don't want to do now, stuff. Now if you would have told me, oh, somebody was bitching about the free fall sections and okay, I'd understand well, I, I yeah, hated those. Right. Those are one of the things I don't like, but you know, what are you gonna do? Alright, we're getting to to that point. But yeah, I, th- I saw you say something about those on Twitter, and then I actually hit one of them for the first time, like, b- back when I played it in February or so, or March, and I was like, wow, these are terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's just... <laughs> these it, are fucking game, horrible. Like, for example... Off strong. And- I didn't, uh, I didn't know you were, you know, like, when you're falling, you're free-falling for the first time in Killzone Shadowfall, and you deploy these little rockets, you know, and you're supposed yeah. to follow the rockets... They don't tell you that until you die for like se- like six or seven times straight, and then yep. in the middle of like the load screen, it says, 
follow the rockets to blah blah blah. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? How am I supposed to know that without you even mentioning it? Uh, but once, you know, they mention that, and once you, that's the thing. Once you play through it after you know what to do, where to go, you understand the weapon feedback, the mechanics and things like that, it's actually kind of fun, I think. But it takes that initial getting past the sour taste, you know, like adjustment period to actually kind of appreciate it. But I, I don't, I don't dislike it because I appreciate them trying to go for like the open ended kind of gameplay, you know, the environments that are no, kind of I, roomy yeah, and they, big. They did good with that. I that mean, stuff's pretty cool. But I um, just think it started off strong and it went downhill quick. I the story is the worst. Oh man, it's so bad. I don't care. And um I I get lost in it. I really don't have any idea what's going on. I feel like I need to have played and I have. That's the thing. I've played the other games. I still have no idea what's going on in Killzone. Yeah, their 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 narrative is just not their strong point. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, like that's the same. Like with Mirror's Edge. When I first played Mirror's Edge, I didn't like it. I thought it was a really bland kind of game. Then because it's all trial and error. I don't know how many times yeah. I fucking died in that game. And then once once I actually got through it, you know, and I learned the levels, and now I love that game. So it's just one of those things you just have to kind of put yourself through it, and then. Eventually, you'll appreciate it. Oh well, that's what I learned tonight. What'd you learn tonight? <laughs> well, I just I, ju I just learned that um that we started. This is probably one of the first episodes where we we had certain topics and we kind of just completely went yeah, really ate shit em. everywhere. Who cares? Yeah, it was good that way. That's what it's if it flows, it flows. Yeah. So, thanks for listening tonight. You can find me yep. on Twitter at it's Don Allen, all one word, obviously. Uh, no apostrophe. If you put an apostrophe, you don't know how to use Twitter. Um. You can find you at slasher JPC. Yep, and uh, yeah, that's same on YouTube. Dice rolls. Same on YouTube. Same um, on YouTube. Mine is different on YouTube, but who cares? I will put that video up on YouTube, or not on YouTube, I'm not on YouTube, another place other than YouTube, uh, in a little bit. So go check that out if you would, and share it, and like it, and whatever else you can do uh, to get me some views. Love Thanks, it. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, and uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Mm-hmm.